started. Welcome everybody. Um, why don't we just do a very quick introduction because I, I see a few new names that may not uh, be known to all of us. Uh, I'm Jill Kagan and I'm the director of Arch. And why don't we move to Kim? Hello, I'm Kim Vivaldi from the Commonwealth of Virginia. I always like to put the Commonwealth in, I don't know why. Uh, I'm with DARS. Uh, I re I was the lifespan grant coordinator and um, recently moved to a different position, we'll, but we'll be supervising our grant. So. Great. How about Christina? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Christina Amadeo, and I am the director of community services here at United Way of Rhode Island, which includes the Family Caregivers Alliance. And I apologize. I was moving my computer and my computer was not on mute. Oh, we didn't hear anything. It's okay. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> Toy? Hi, everyone. I'm Toy Pilot, and I'm the executive director for South Carolina Respite Coalition. And Rachel? Hi, my name is Rachel Watkins-Peterson, and I work at Respite Care Association of Wisconsin, otherwise known as RCAW. Great. And I think, is that Roxanne with us? Yes, Roxanne Tegora, I'm with Eldon Partners Social Services, the CARE State Director and Life Spirit Respite Grant Manager. Welcome. And Judith. Hi, I'm Judith Goddard. I am a contractor with the State of Rhode Island Office of Healthy Aging for Policy and Program Development. So I am trying to help them move forward with their state plan now that um, Aletha is retiring. Yeah, we just heard about Aletha's retirement. We're going to be miss her very much. And Naomi. Hi, I'm Naomi Toller. I am with the Arkansas Department of Human Services. I assist Sarah Schmidt with the Arkansas Lifespan Respite Voucher Program. Wonderful. Welcome. So we are all here as leaders or potential leaders. Uh, we were trying to spend the last almost 12 months fostering leadership skills so that regardless of where you were sitting in a state respite coalition or as a state grantee that you would feel more comfortable in taking a leadership role um, within your state to help advance the goals of the national strategy. And that's really what we've been working on for the last year and a half. So this first question is, um, how prepared and ready are you to take leadership uh, in implementing one or more of the national strategy goals in your state? I can say um, in Wisconsin, we took all five of the goals um, and put columns in a document and the goal and the outcomes. And we realized that most of our programs and offerings fall under um, goal three, strengthening services and supports. And when once we looked at this document, we saw what goals we needed to put more muscle into and, and focus on as well. That's what I have for now. No, that's very helpful. And I think, you know, it depends on how your coalition is structured also. Um, a lot of the coalitions do have state agency members, community-based respite provider members, and so there is more of a, there was more of an effort to work across state agencies and programs um, in seeing where you fall out uh, in implementing those goals. Anybody else want to take a stab at how prepared and ready are you to move forward in a leadership role? I like to think that I'm prepared. <laughs> If, but if Sarah needed me to completely take over on the respite, I like to think that everything would transition smoothly to my care, but um, I still feel like there's a lot of the ins and outs in our internal systems that I'm not particularly familiar with. Um, I, I definitely understand grants. I understand the voucher program. Um, I've got a lot of experience with things like that, but um I, I don't know. I, I just still feel um, hesitant. You're relatively new to Arkansas too, aren't you? 
Um, I've been with Arkansas. I've been working as a state employee for Arkansas for about six years now, um, but I've been with Dip Squad, this particular division, for about three years. Yeah, but, but as far as working with respite, <laughs> I've only been working with respite for about four months now. Yeah, four that's five what months. I thought. That's what I meant. Yeah. That you were relatively new to the yes. lifespan respite initiative and respite more broadly. Right. So you you missed a lot of our early meetings on the national strategy. As, as you're not the only one. We've had a lot of people coming and going in and out of the strategy, oh, uh, yeah. learning collaborative which was a little bit difficult because the each session uh, built on the one before. So it was a progressive um, effort and we've done a lot of learning and growing since February 23 when we first uh, first met. So that's understandable. Anybody else want to talk about that issue? Did, you, did I read that you have the past um, um, collaboratives recorded and our archive it, yes you know this would be maybe the time also too I've I, I feel for her because I understand I felt like I came in and at, you know just with this idea uh, thinking I know what it was and then you know how how much broader um, the outreach is and how important it is and the changes that I'm seeing happen in I think a, a large amount of time and I think at this point in my learning uh, with it, going back and rewatching those um, those recordings would be really helpful. Where are they no, located? Lot, there are a lot of recordings to to listen to, but um, they are all there if you're so inclined. Okay, thank you. I'm also, you know, we at Archer are also available to have a one on one meeting with you. Uh, at any time, if you feel like you want to have a better understanding of the concepts of lifespan respite, mm -hmm. um, what was the original intent of the program? How is your state fitting in with the original intent of the program or what arch resources we have? Whatever it is that you might need, um, we're available to help catch you up as well. So, so don't ever hesitate to ask. Um, I like to say I'm, I, I think I'm ready. I'm new into my position as the executive director, but um, I have been with my agency for over five years. And so respite has been um, my part. And so I, I think that I'm ready. I hope I'm ready. <laughs> Christina, you've got your hand up. I figured I'd put my hand up so that I wouldn't interrupt anyone. Oh. <laughs> So in terms of Rhode Island and the Family Caregivers Alliance, uh, the first thing that we're really concentrating on is um, a greater awareness of the Family Caregivers Alliance and also other caregiver resources. We're also trying to engage not only professionals that work in caregiving, but caregivers with caregivers, but also BIPOC communities throughout Rhode Island. We feel that we, in terms of the Family Caregivers Alliance, we are still short in terms of reaching out to non-English speaking and other BIPOC communities. So as part of our state caregivers plan, that's what we're concentrating primarily on. That's a very good goal to, to be working on. Anyone else? I think we've hit just about everybody. Um, the next question, what tools or resources would help you sustain your leadership efforts? That certainly just segues nicely from what I just offered from Arch. We certainly have TA and tools that we can help you with. And you have an amazing network of peers and colleagues who are also willing to share information um, but if you have specific tools or resources you think would help you sustain your leadership efforts in particular, that might be helpful to, to know about. I know, I, Christina, I see what you put in the chat, funding out. <laughs> I was gonna say the same. Um, Jill, maybe we should say besides funding. <laughs> <laughs> that would be helpful. Yeah, I, I was trying to be funny. First. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to be funny because without funding, we're just a dream. Well, I mean, the whole, I mean, the whole issue around the national strategy yeah. also, the federal legislation also said you can, the, the councils can make recommendations as long as they don't spend any money. <laughs> I mean,
I mean, not in so many words, but that's pretty much what it said. So that did tie our hands also. Um, but I think that's what puts the lifespan grantees and the coalitions in a unique position. At least we have some respite funds, uh, as small, as minimal as they are, that we can work with to um, leverage other partners and engage other partners and think about how outside of funding, how can we expand and grow respite for family caregivers um, that strengthens the system overall. And I really, I personally happen to think partnerships are really critical. Um, That's a really good those segue. partnerships that maybe we haven't thought about before. Uh, you That's know, those a good are the insurance into why sector. I have my... Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Judith, go ahead, you have your hand up. Um, that's a good segue into why I had my hand up. I think that um, I'm kind of new to Rhode Island, so I really can't speak too heavily on the subject, but coming from my background, I think one of the things I see, I don't wanna say that's lacking, but could use some work is some more um, care hubs, some more teams within the communities that can uh, source out some of the things that need to be done so that each agency isn't trying to do it all. Instead, everybody's doing what they do really well, but they're doing it together. So breaking down the silos and kind of building that network so that the resources, while the funding is not available, resources can be attained in other ways. Yeah, to maximize what existing resources there are. To, to follow up on what Judy said, I, I totally agree with you, Judy. Uh, we One of the things that we've tried to do here at United Way, I, 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 I'm the director for several programs for the Office of Healthy Aging. Uh, when we apply for funding for other grants, we always try to find a synergy with the Family Caregivers Alliance and outreach. So right now we have five different grants that actually pay for outreach. This means that we can have um, additional staffing and we can have additional resources to support this outreach. So we found synergy within programs so that we can basically complement each other, if that makes sense. Anyone else? Why don't we just jump to the last uh, question? Um, and that is, what else would you like to share about your own personal experiences working on the national strategy goals? Anything that you'd like ACL especially to know? As they, Can you ask the question again, Jill? What, what else would you like to share about your experiences working on the national strategy goals? Screaming it from the rooftops, I think we need to do a better job outreaching to BIPOC and non-English speaking communities. Oh my gosh, I shared my screen on accident. I'm sorry. <laughs> that looked pretty interesting. I, <laughs> I thought I said something special that you were sharing. Look at that. No, I'm so I'm so sorry. <laughs> Fat fingers. I don't know how that happened. I apologize. No, I think that's a critical point, Christina. Mm-hmm. For me, I think something that because I'm now just trying to cram all the information in and get as much knowledge as I possibly can um, in multiple programs with OHA. And I think that uh, many of many of times I'll look at something from ACL and there are a lot of similar strategies. And if ACL had a kind of a crosswalk that could identify this strategy goes across these different programs. And then you're not recreating the wheel each time to try to figure out how to address that strategy. Um, and then I think it could be much more effective because you're you're developing something within that strategy that is going to hit all the marks for the different programs that are that are required to meet that recommendation. So better information sharing from ACL about other programs that they. Implement? I, I think I think more like a crosswalk. So um, if I, I guess an example for me to use would be looking at the NCIAD, which is the National Core Indicators for Aging and Disabled. 
And if you look at those, you can see here's what the what the strategy is. Here's the different points that it's going to hit. There's there could be HCBS, there could be CMS, any different you know reporting body <laughs> that might need to come about. And I think that in looking at those, I really came across a lot of commonality in the strategies, but everyone's approaching it differently. So if they had that crosswalk to say this one strategy, here's all the programs. So you look at that box and it, it, it would simplify things. It would make things much more efficient. It would bring down the total spending for all of these programs because you're able to identify which, you know, this program is doing this really well. So let's partner with them to get that done. If that makes any sense. No, that's an excellent idea. Any other thoughts? We did a statewide survey, one for professionals and one for family caregivers. Um, and that was, I don't have all of the data organized right now, but we listed the five goals and asked family caregivers and the professionals, like I said, two different surveys to rank the goals, what they think one, the least important, five, the most important, and ask them to rank them and then to provide feedback for what they would like to see. Um, and I I just, I don't know, when we're talking about family caregivers, I love to hear from them um, more than anyone. So I would give it a go, recommend it. Um, the surveys are really, really important. And this the data that I have looked at and um, so far is really interesting. So that kind of helped us um, that kind of, it absolutely helped us um, kind of putting a plan in place to how to do better. Was there a tremendous difference in ranking between the providers and the family caregivers? Um, no, there wasn't a tremendous difference. And the survey was done yesterday. So it was so I kept peeking in to like look at results, but um, I can share them. It, it's just Wisconsin specific though, once I get them, but um it was goal number across the board, goal number three, strength and service and yeah. support seemed to be ranked as the highest, um, the highest priority for individuals, whether they're a professional or a family caregiver. In well, the data the research and evidence, them. yeah. Sorry to cut you off. And goal number five was the lowest um priority. Very interesting. We would love to see your results from that when you Yeah. For sure. Hold them all together. That could be something that other states could probably do relatively easily as well. Yeah. How did you disseminate it broadly throughout the state? Um, through our board members. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of them are in um triple A's and across the children's um the children's world, um, doing a presentation on it. So we got it into the hands of ADRCs and counties and asked them to disseminate it. And then we have a lot of rural areas in Wisconsin, and we heard loud and clear, um, not everyone has the internet, is able to use it. So we did paper copies um, available, and they have to mail them in, and we have to tally those up. And I haven't even seen those yet. So um, just yeah. have Well, many other states them. also have needs assessments in place that they've done in the past, and maybe they could use their the same distribution list for asking those yeah. questions. Well, it looks like we are going to, um, maybe I should keep this, the breakout rooms open for another five minutes because we've got a lot of time. I'm going to do that for a while. Can I just um, can I just make a point to the information that she's going to share? Mm -hmm. um, and there is probably a lot of other states who can not only use that information, but also have maybe surveys that they've done themselves. So another thing that might be helpful is to have a repository for all of these types of surveys and, and data that come up in, in some of the work that each individual state is doing. And that way, it's a, a good way to, to share and learn from one another and really strengthen um, across the nation. How yeah, absolutely. Well, one thing that ARCH does, we have a whole section of our website on uh, resources that states share with us. Um, and there is a whole section on state surveys, um, the survey instruments, as well as if they've shared their final reports with us, those are available uh, on the ARCH website also. So That's great to know, because I've been yeah. looking for information, so I'm definitely going to have to do that. Thank you. Yeah, if you need any help navigating the 
website. Actually, I have an orientation guide that I'll send to you, Judith. So oh, that would be fantastic. You can familiarize yourself with the arch resources that we already have. So you don't have to go around reinventing. Yeah. <laughs> I you also want to say way. I'm a real proponent of community health workers. And when you're in the yes. rural areas and it's difficult to make that happen, paper is not always the answer because there's too much room for human error. Number one, also papers can get lost. Um, but if you have CHWs who have access to VPNs and uh, MiFi's, then they can have it kind of like a, I don't even know what it's called now. It used to be SurveyMonkey or even the Microsoft um, forms where they can actually do that. And it can, it can tally everything and you can do analytics from all of those things. So I think that um, that's another way of really being able to, uh, to pay attention to those rural areas and be able 